What's going on, everyone? It's your girl, Don Hatch. And of course, sitting here beside me is the man himself, Tabari TV. What's up, Don? You're going to stop looking at my forehead, Tad. You it's, good? It's like hard not to look at it. But <laughs> we moving on. Yes, you know? we it's, are. It was an awesome week. Awesome week. What's yes. going on with you? I saw some stuff on um, IG. Where'd yes, you go? Yeah, you know, I hit up the Chris Breezy concert. But I hear you got some great things going on as well. That's what's up, man. Um, DJ Laquanda's party. You know yes. what I'm saying? It was off the hook. Um, That's our girl, Laquanda. And um, doing a lot of stuff with DeKalb County. And um, there was another party that I didn't get a ticket to. I didn't get a I didn't get a ticket either. Yeah, Mr. Perry, I heard you had the biggest studio opening era and we didn't get any tickets. Nothing. We, we don't know nobody? We were on the do not invite list. But I do know somebody who was up in there. Miss Kiki Haynes is going to come down here and give us an interview. So stay tight on this episode of Road to Hollywood. All right, thank you all again for tuning in to Road to Hollywood. This is an exciting episode. We are going to dedicate this episode to Tyler Perry and the opening of Tyler Perry Studios. It was an awesome event, so I heard. Yeah, I saw a lot of pictures. You know what, <laughs> you know what? But this is actually cool. I felt some type of way, but then I also felt, you know, just excited for all the stuff that's going on in town. Uh, I was fortunate to be part of the crew that put the first um, studio together, studio party together, and that's kind of where we kind of met. We did! This is 11 plus years of friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was a PA at Tyler Perry Studios <laughs> and Dawn was doing... I started off being an extra. All right. And then I moved up you was to up. a stand-in. You was a stand-in. Yes, and you I'm were... proud too. I'm proud because yeah, I, learned, was... I learned a lot over there at TPS. You know what? It was uh, That was one thing that I loved about the stand-in. Shout out to all my stand-in crews, the people that was out there holding it down for Amita um, Browns and House of Pain. Yeah. But, um, that's where I saw a lot of y'all honing y'all chops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, that was a time where, you know, I feel like a lot of us were like, we didn't want to just be labeled as stand-ins. We knew that we wanted to do more with our career. And so what we would do, we would go to set, and although we were uh, labeled as stand-ins, we would go to set and we would line our lines on the side. And so then when it was time for us to perform, you know, or be in front of everyone. So, so everybody doesn't know. So, all right, cool. This is how the day went. So we would come to, we would come to a table read at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. By eight, by ten o'clock, I would have the first team in hair and makeup, and then when the first team is, you know, in hair and makeup, that's when the stand-ins come and we do a technical rehearsal. Yeah. And that's and, and and it's not just about a lot of times stand-ins is about height and complexion. And one thing I know that everybody took it super serious and um, really honed their craft up there. We did. It was a lot of fun, and we I just learned a lot of uh, things about being. Um, at a professional studio during that time, okay. you know, as far as like, you know, basically allow the actors to focus, you know, don't be there kickling and cackling and, yeah. you know, playing around and everything like that. Like, and you know, you, our job, know what your job is and do it well. There was a lot of fanfare in town. You know, I saw people rehearsing and practicing for a couple weeks on social media. Um, they changed the signage on 85 and Lankford Parkway to Tyler Perry Studios, which is an awesome, awesome thing, man. When you see that and you riding down 85 and you see what this man has accomplished and you've been watching, we've all been part of this man's dream and, and, and been inspired by him in some way. Um, so it was just a, a, a great thing to start seeing things on, on, on social media. The studio is on 330 acres of land, which is the former Fort McPherson complex, which is so major. It has 12 sound stages and everything the state of the art. Yeah, you know Mr. Perry's gonna have everything, every, everything state of the art. Um, right. One thing that I really impressed me was I saw a couple of my friends, Brad James has been on the show. Yeah. He gave them like stars of fame on the studio. Um, I saw a couple of people, I saw Brad's, I saw China McLean's, and I saw Doc Shaw, and I was really, you know, it, it, it feels good that I felt like we were part of history, yeah, and that, we that saw is. all of that coming together, and it was just an awesome sight just to kind of see. I, was, I saw so many different actors and lots of tears. Those were tears of joy because I know that a lot of the actors, I'm, I'm sure they didn't expect it, so that's awesome. And he always has, like, Mr. Perry throws the, uh, the best parties ever. Uh, if you... You know what I'm talking about if you've been invited. And yes, we weren't invited to this one, but I've been to some other presidents. Next one. Next one. We, we did. We're getting stars. Claiming it. And everything. Scores. Um, 
you know, but it, 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 it really is, you know, I just want to pay homage to him because I really don't think like this, I got um, a lot of my inspiration to build a studio, to do films and do everything. Shout out all the people that I came up with in this film and television industry where me and Dawn met. Shout out to all the people, George Pierre, Angie, Roger, Paris, everybody that we came up with. And we need to have like a little family reunion or something. That would be nice. You should sponsor it. In your look. <laughs> Keep that. So sit back, everybody. We got Kiki Haynes is going to be right here at this desk in the studio. She was one of the people that was on the inside of the party while we was on the outside. So everybody buckle in and watch this episode of Road to Hollywood. What up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of Road to Hollywood, and I have my good friend Kiki Haynes here. Stop the place, stand up! <laughs> <laughs> she already... Everybody doesn't know this, but me and Kiki grew up two houses away from Literally each other. two houses away. I was 24, you were 22? No, I was 16. 16, okay. So I don't know how that went, but it was... Maybe like three houses. Okay. Three houses. It was the McClouds, the Goods, and in your house. Yeah, I think you were the last house before the apartment building. Yeah, bingo, bingo, bingo. And um, I, I want to start off on a sad note, but we lost a friend. Who? Rock Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so um, definitely shout out our childhood friend, Rock Mine and Goods. We love you guys. Yeah. And um, on the on the on the uh, catching up, man, I was so excited. I was not invited to this fabulous party. Which I was so shocked. I was like, where is Tabari? <laughs> I wasn't shocked, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> edit, edit that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, it, you know, and I was trying. To, I, I, I knew it was fabulous because I was part of the the one that we did in two thousand eight. So you did go a, to that. No, I was. Okay. That was how I got into the studio. I was a PA on the concert and orchestra team. Okay. No, it, no, it wasn't the concert and orchestra. It was I had uh, tours and I had the orchestra. Okay. And I was captain of that team, and then I segued into PA, and, and that's how it all started. But it all started uh, October. Uh, for 2008, and this well, here was we like, are. Well, here we are. Is it 11 years later? Yeah, yeah. It was 11 years later. You know, saying so for him to open this um, new stu studio, and I was so kind of proud and just awesome. So, what's been going on with you? I'm just great to catch up with you. I'm gonna start from childhood and go all the way to present. So, <laughs> okay. you know, it was good just kind of catching up with you, and I'm glad that you were here. Yes. No, I'm I'm good. I, it's so interesting because people are like, "Why are you glowing?" I was like, "You are glowing." I am glowing. Mm -hmm. um, I think besides the new bronzer that I'm wearing it's um, I'm happy oh, no 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 got a lot got a long line of donors waiting to be like key I'm here when you need me but no 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 babies uh, not just yet but um no I'm, I'm happy I'm happy because I am one for the first time I just got finished producing my first project oh that's awesome it is a film called just a phase and and it's my baby and it was an idea that I had, honestly, for about a good five years. But what made me finally put my pedal to the metal is, you know, when you come off of a project, which I was very grateful for being on a show for six seasons, mm -hmm. five years, but when you're on something that long, I found that it's really rough sometimes for casting directors to see you outside of that role. Definitely. So I was literally like trudging, trying to get into certain doors. And then even times when I was called in, it was always for that same type of role. Exactly. So uh, my ex-TV husband, uh, ex Castmate Ken Falcon, who is like, what up, Ken? What up, K Falcon? <laughs> um, no, I, I hit him up because you know he's always been a director and a writer. And when we were shooting the show, he would constantly say, "Key, you know, I want to work with you outside of this." And so when I just by my 18th, you know, door cl closed in my face, or just unable to see all of I'm bringing to the table, I said, "I need you to write a project for me." And we came up uh, with a couple of concepts, I think it was about three or four, mm -hmm. and uh, I chose the one that we end up developing because it is so out of the box from what I had ever done and how anybody had ever seen me. I am an uh, engineering scientist who is brilliant and who discovers a device that gives me pretty much superhero powers. Uh -oh. And beyond just me, you don't see black women, period. It's Well, it's interesting because now that we have black lightning and... Um, uh, oh my gosh, welcome to Wakanda. Um, uh, help me, um, Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh, now that we have that, of course, it's, it's being turned around, which is so interesting. 
because when we first started talking about this idea, this was before Black Panther came out right. and before Black Lightning. So now black women are being get, beginning to be seen as not just leading ladies, but leading ladies of you know the whole sci-fi STEM world. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's interesting because we actually just finished our last edits not even two months ago. Uh -huh. And I just had my first screening about two and a half weeks ago. And I will say that um, some of Hollywood came out to the screening. It was dope. It was so dope. But a lot of them, even before they saw it, can I just tell you that some of those casting directors that I wasn't able to get into their rooms, just when they heard that I was producing my own films, my own project, I started to get like more respect. So it was like this thing that like uh, Chris uh, Chris Rock. I saw Chris Rock uh, on a, I don't know if it was one of his shows or podcast or something, and he was talking about when people help you. And it was like you could be out on the side of the road and you could be waving a cars down if you got a flat tire or something and people would just keep passing, keep passing. He was like, one time he got frustrated enough that he was on the side of the road, he started pushing his car. Mm -hmm. And when he started pushing his car, people joined in. People that would came back and was like, "All right, cool. Like, as long as you're putting that effort forward, I'll you know, join that's what you." It is. So let's go back to East Orange. You know, that's a great analogy. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Because when they saw him sitting by the road or sitting in his car or wherever he was sitting, they didn't nobody stop. But nobody. when they, but when they saw him beginning to do it himself, they joined. In. That was a great analogy because when he was stranded, whether he was uh, sitting in his car or sitting on the outside of the car at the curb, nobody stopped to help him. Yeah. But at the moment that he began to push his own car and people saw that he was making efforts to help himself, they joined in. Yeah. And so I, I can attribute that to, you know, even though of course I've always been driven, I, I believe that I'm a talented actress, I, I take class, I take notes, I, I pour into my craft. It wasn't until they, like I said, before many people haven't even seen my project yet, once they got word that I was producing yeah. my own film, it was like, oh, Okay, so she's got other levels and layers to her. Let's bring her in and see what she can do. Now, mind you, I didn't do anything different that I would have done had they brought me in prior to finding that information out, but it just made them see me in a different light. And I think sometimes as artists, that's the whole purpose. It's not what it is. It's the perspective that people have on you. And it's not about right or wrong. That's not the fight you want. The fight you want is how can I get them to let me in yeah. so that I can show them all that I'm coming with. and. The smile, the glow that I have right now, I feel like that's what just the phase is doing for me. All right, cool. Let's go all the way back to East Orange. Um, I didn't know when we were kids that you were actors, and then I heard you, you didn't know drama. all the drama I, I was bringing. Nah, you brought the drama. I was like hot peas and butter, come and get yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I didn't. I knew that you went to Arts High. Yes. And so tell me about that experience. Wow. Well, well, first of all, when I went to Arts, I thought it was going to be like fame. Mm -hmm. I thought that people were going to be like dancing down the halls and... <laughs> you saw Leroy. <laughs> right. The rest were like, hey, Kiki girl, how you doing? No, it wasn't like that. But you did have to uh, audition to get in. Okay. And what what was grounded in me at Arts High was, you know, each major that you were in had to be in the arts. Of course, that was drama. There was mu music, uh, instruments, singing, and artistry. And uh, it, it allowed me to not only begin to work on my craft as an actor, we had to produce our own projects even then. Mm -hmm. And so I met other fellow, you know, artists who, you know, felt in their passion that even though I did it, it's not something that, you know, you go to school to be a, a lawyer or a dentist or, you know, any kind of business management. And normally, as long as you get the, the studies, you can get a job. It's not like that. It's like, you know, you go to school because you have a passion for it and you want to believe that you can make it, but it's not necessarily the end. You know, everybody's luck is not that way, but it was great to be in our time because all of us felt like we could make it. In fact, I have a lot of people who come, came out of my high school who were very successful, like Mike B. Jordan, speaking of Black Panther. Uh, Mike is younger than me, but we went to the same school. You got Mike, you got Tisha Campbell, you got Savion Glover. You know, there's some people who can't, um, what is Sharif's last name? Uh, Sharif Fears. You know, there's a lot of us that continue, you know what I mean, to, to work at it. So, it, but I can't say it started at Arts. It actually started at Hart Middle. Okay. I you went, went to Hart Middle? I went to Hart, I went to Hart Middle one year. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Hart what Middle. What building? Uh, A. Okay. A was for awesome. <laughs> Um, I went to A, and there was a drama teacher named Miss Neal. Okay. And of course, I was in middle school, so it wasn't about you know being in any majors. But I was part of her drama club, and I remember that we had a play. I can't remember which play that we did, but I remember uh, there were six, seventh, and eighth graders, of course, in the school. And she said, whoever performs best from each grade is gonna win a trip to go see a live taping of the Cosby Show. And I won for the sixth grade. Oh, that's so dope. That's so dope. So I, and so between me winning, and then between me being in that live studio audience, and 
you know, watching them, I, it was something in me even then to Barbie. I swear it was like, that's what I want to do. That's dope, that's dope. So, uh, we had like a gap about 10 years that I didn't see you, and um, I saw you at the train station. Yes. At Brick Church. At Brick Church. We had our little train station <laughs> hustle going on. Yes, Shout out to Dabo! <laughs> that's that's what I love. Um, I ran into Kiki, and Kiki was on her grind, you know, and every time I was seeing you, you were talking to me going to um, different uh, auditions, auditions and things like that. So tell me the difference of the grind in New York compared to the LA. LA. The biggest difference to me is the grind in New York is, New York is honestly just about the talent. Okay. You could be, you know, on the street playing a bucket, i.e. how, you know, bring the noise, bring the funk started. And the right talent agent or the right producer can see you and be like, wow, I see, you know, I see the, the vision of this and they'll bring you in and you could have a show. In LA, there's more of a protocol in terms of how things are done. You can be extremely um, talented, but if you're not repped by the by the right person, okay. they won't even open their doors to see you a lot of times. It's almost like, to me, LA has to have a certain stamp of approval on you first before they even give you their eye. How do you get that approval? You, a lot of times you have to build the right relationships. Um, uh, social media has changed the game tremendously though. It has kind of broken those walls down in the sense where if you don't have the right rep and you know if you have a certain following and people start having building a buzz about you then of course naturally unless they're under a rock mm -hmm. they're going to hear about you and then they'll come seek you out so that has helped a little bit but I moved to LA 16 years ago in 2003 it wasn't like that so I think that it's a little bit easier I know that seems like a lifetime ago but um, now I think social media and just you know the whole streaming and people creating their own content uh, it's a little bit easier now where you can be seen mm -hmm. you can skip over that that protocol so uh, I guess in a sense as I'm talking to you the, the game is changing right mm -hmm. now but in the beginning that was the number one note, uh, difference that I noticed um, and I, I remember that during that time you were in you know doing a lot of work with Spike Lee so speaking of Spike so uh, if we can transition you know why I came down here this weekend and so uh, I went to Tyler Perry's amazing event called Imagine This. I, I mean, get that. I was gonna get there, but, but you brought us Pikes. So I gotta tell you. All right. So what's interesting is uh, we can. I'll just talk about this one point. There is, I think, twelve sound stages, mm -hmm. and what Tyler decided to do was um, dedicate each sound stage to a person of importance in his industry. One of them is Tyler Spike Lee. Now, Spike, you know, gave me and uh, our our girlfriend, you know, Kalita, our start in the sense where we both got the uh, Screen Actors Guild by doing Bamboozle. Yeah. So fast forward, I mean, that had to be, what, 20 years ago? So Spike actually was at the, of course, the event this weekend, and he sees me, he's like, Kiki, how you doing? What's going on? You know, what you working on? And I was like, well, I'm not working on a project. The moment you want to hire me? First thing I said, he was like, Keith, what you doing? And I told him about just the phase, and I told him that, you know, it's a short film, but it's 45 minutes. We're kind of in between, you know, either streaming it, turning it into a streaming series or a feature. Uh, but we're taking minutes. He was like, Keith, for real? Call me. What's up? So I don't know what that's going to turn into, but for him to be the person that pretty much gave me my start in this business and for it to come full circle and me be at this amazing event and me produce my first project, and he's the one that I run into who's like, Keith, for real, call me. I up. didn't seek him out. He came to me. That to me was nothing but God. And um, just like you know, it's like funny to me. I always see that, and this is like things that as I get older in life, and um, I start to see things <clears throat> more consecutively. When I'm on my grind, mm -hmm. and I'm like not paying attention to whatever else is going on, I meet the other people that's on their grind. And you yes. know, and you don't necessarily meet them in a television studio or whatever you're all going to the same thing. You're all trying to figure it out and you end up at the same places and have different crossroads. So that's dope. So um, you, you go out to LA and in LA, what, what, that started out that for you? So I moved to LA in 2003. Now mind you, like I said, I, I worked on Bamboozle. I worked on a few projects in New York, so I was already a uh, professional, if I could say that. I was a Screen Actors Guild actor. But when I came to LA, so do you remember what the feeling felt like when you went from being, um, eighth grade speaking of middle school mm -hmm. you were like you know because it goes six seven eight so eighth graders y'all are the, the, the top of the top do you remember what it felt like to go from eighth grade to freshman year right. in high school again that's what it felt like okay. it felt like i had built so many relationships in new york i had a little bit of a buzz about me i i, I had networked you know so i knew what projects were going i got called first when i went to la they were like who i'm yeah. sorry who are you 
And what, what, have you, um, what have you been, who knows you? Who reps you? And I was like, I'm Kiki, <laughs> Stockton Place 10. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's they were like, place. shut up, we don't know you. So it was, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was um, definitely uh, humbled beginnings to say the least. I had to literally work my way from the bottom again with my SAG card, but I had to, you know, reintroduce myself to a new crowd of people. LA Allow and New York. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Key. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was honestly, but I but you know I was I was I've always known this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. so I, I I wasn't deterred at all. I was just like you know what, because some people who come to LA and this is one advice I will say, people say oh I'm gonna come to LA for five months or six months and if it doesn't happen then I'm like, you can't come with a time limit. That's like you saying you're gonna go to this company and if you don't become senior VP by like it don't happen that way. Right. Timing is everything. So. I just was like, okay, well, whoever I need to meet, whoever I need to navigate, I'm just gonna come in there and do it. And so, you know, I had to build new relationships. And luckily, actually, the the guy that I met, both Kalita and I met, you know, we moved out there together. Uh, Cisco Reyes, shout out to my LA brother. <laughs> um, so uh, wait, wait, let's let's rewind. Let's rewind. <laughs> Um, so you went out to LA with someone. Yes, so a big part of the confidence <laughs> was I moved to LA with a very dear, one of my best friends, Kalita Outlaw. Right. And I think by me having a little bit of home with me, it made me feel like, okay, together we can do this. So that was like, all right, so um, Kalita was my girlfriend at that time. I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Kalita was my girlfriend at that time. And somehow weird something, Kiki and Kylie to be famous. I mean, I'm friend. so lovable. I mean, it was just <laughs> inevitably gonna happen. <laughs> Kalita and Kiki became great friends. Shout and out to Kalita. Shout out to Kay. Um, and they kind of went on that voyage together. So when you're even saying like the names, I remember, yo, I think I met Cisco one time, but I didn't oh, know okay. that I met him until like after. And I was like, that was the Cisco. But I went out yeah. to LA and I met some LA friends and he was at a party or whatever. And I was like, hey, I think that was the dude. So it was funny. So y'all went out there for years and years and years. And what's also interesting is, and again, not trying to make it super spiritual, but I am a firm believer in Let's God. make it spiritual. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. But no, I do believe Ooh. that um, everything was, was, was ordained and lined up because even meeting Cisco in LA, he actually happened to be family of somebody we knew back in New York. Uh, Jason, actually, that was his cousin. So uh, Cisco's originally from New York. So we met an East Coast person. He had a space in his apartment we roomed with. And on top of that, he embraced us to where he had an audition for commercials. He was like, yo, y'all want to come? They, they got female roles, too. Crashing it. I'm getting callbacks to his agent, who's never met me, who's like, Cisco, who's this Kiki girl that, you know, they want to see her again? But it was like love. Like, that's how East, that's, so that's the biggest So you difference. had your team. Like I had I, and my that was team. one thing I felt good, you know, when Kalita went out there that, you know, y'all were together. That yeah. made me, you know, more so than somebody just going out there by themselves because she had the same dream and y'all were, were on it. Y'all were focused. And, um, you know, it was dope to know that y'all were out there. And we were constantly know, pulling each other yeah. in. It was like, oh, you know, so you go out for this. But if I saw that when I went out for this, they were also looking for, I was like, hey, I got my homegirl or I got my, and so, and that's the interesting trait because especially these days, everybody's in competition with right. each other. And yeah. I don't believe in comp. I believe like what's mine is mine yes. and you know, it, yes. it was for me. And getting back to my foundation and my faith, I firmly believe that what's meant for you is meant for you. So I don't care that I'm telling this person or that person about an audition. Like, How would you do that? Yeah. You know, what if she gets before you? Then it was meant for her. Right. It wasn't meant for me. And I'm glad that I could be a part of that. And prayerfully, she'll send that blessing back or it'll come back from, you know, a different direction. But a lot of times people are so afraid because I get it. It's this many actors or this many artists and this many jobs. You know, you could easily be so closed mouth because you don't want to. But it's not about that. If it was meant for them, some, even if you don't tell them, somebody else going to tell them. Yeah. It's going to, you know, it's going to find them. But we definitely, like, kind of pitch to each other back and forth. And I think that made a big difference. That's super dope. So one of the things that, um, you know, that I can kind of say about when you're grinding and you're on something, be around like-minded people. Be around like-minded like people. Like-minded people, like-minded energy, you know, because it always keeps you, even on my grind right now, like, um, you know, I'm doing this podcast thing, and um, I, I want to, I have other programs that will be coming out, but I'm only messing with a new set of like-minded people. If you don't have that energy, if you're not fired up, like, I'm, I got other things Dude, to do. Dude, if I didn't love you, we didn't have the history that we have, I wouldn't be here. I was on my way to the airport right now. I have to drop her off. Literally. <laughs> And my sister's like, you better not stay there too long. But I'm like, you know, there's no one else that I would have made this pit, 
hit stop for. Oh, I really the appreciate that. To come back, but you. All right. All I was right. like, nah, you know, I'm busy because I hate trying to cram in too much. But I'm like, you're doing a podcast, and I see. Which can I bring it up? What You're being honored. Yeah. In our hometown, like yeah. you, are you getting the key to the city? No, nah, I'm not. Getting the key. <laughs> I don't know. I'm coming for the key. You're you know for what? The key? I'm coming for the key. Um, it's a really exciting thing. So I've been inducted to the Hall of Fame of East Orange. You what? I've been inducted to the Hall of Fame of East Orange. I think they just Orange don't have my Jersey. number yet. I think that's They're going to get your number. <laughs> I know people. Dude, that's so dope. Yeah. It, it, it's good, you know, because one of the things that when I came down here, it was real important to me, like I have my Jersey telephone number. I just didn't want to like- Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to be connected to friends. But just like you said, with social media, it has helped me so much just to be connected to friends and family that are um, in Jersey. And yeah, and, and, and this is like really, it's a humbling experience. And we're going to do some big things. I'm going to have an event afterwards. And, and you know, it's going to be an opportunity to see like everybody that I, in my life. But you, the place that you're from is acknowledging you yeah. and letting you know that they are proud of you. We. I'm from there too. I'm proud of you. That's, what's that's so dope. Yeah, thank you. Kate. But that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Lucky me. <laughs> All right. So I remember talking to you, you know, and about two months before you get the call to For Better or Worse, and you weren't in a good place. No, that year prior to booking that show, I was not in a good place, which is interesting why I was sharing with you. You know, before we started filming about uh, T.D. Jake's sermon. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, and I learned this now, that when you're going through a storm, you're just coming out of a storm in the midst of it, that means that something big is coming. And I know that sounds so cliche, and that just sounds like positive talk, but it's not. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to go through lows, you have to go through storms, and sometimes even hit rock bottom. So that way, whatever the good thing is that's ahead, you won't be able to understand what something what good is if you don't experience bad. Okay. It's really what it comes down to. And there's an appreciation that you have when you get that big thing. You'll know how to, 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 to appreciate it and your humility will be like right here because that's important for you to keep it. And so no, I was not, I had no idea that that was coming down a pipeline. But when it came, I do believe that it was the perfect time. I do believe that that role was meant for me because I didn't even know about the project. That's how off the grid I was. Yeah. At the time when they were casting, they were, I found out after I booked the role, booked it in what, May or June? They had been casting since like January mm -hmm. and they just weren't finding the right girl for it, the right woman for it. And all of a sudden I meet him and two hours later he's like, or actually no, he must have said immediately that that was it. I found out two hours later that he was like, that's her. You know, it was like a surreal um, experience. Like, I love seeing my friends come up. Like, I love I'm like, like that, that. even more so for myself. Like, you know, because I always believe, like, my time will come no matter what's going on. Like, we, but I Your time was, will come. Dude, you came running down the hall <laughs> at me, so your time was then, was now, was like, your time had come. I just love being... You know when you when you have friends and being on the other side of that conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew when your name started coming up, I was like, all right, this is this is it. Like, this is how it happens. You don't realize. So your name is coming up and it's just like, all right, cool, whatever I could do to kind of keep that name in there. And then it was just like, all right, cool. I think I give I think I knew you had got the role. And then like I wanted them to tell you, when I called you, I was like so excited for you. And then that's when I um when you came to town. We, uh, when you came to town, we did, we did some videos. But know. even before that, I didn't even know that you knew. When I, when I, so I literally, my, and I, I used to do speaking um, engagements, guest speaker engagements, because I would say that my life changed in 72 hours. Because mm -hmm. I got the call Monday night for the audition. I went in Tuesday afternoon. I found out two hours later on Tuesday that I booked the role. And then I was on a flight Wednesday, on a red-eye flight, heading down to Atlanta, to Tyler Perry Studios, and that's when I, I uh, saw you. They never let me go to my hotel. They actually, because, you know, uh, the three-hour difference. Did we do our video in, in your wardrobe? Yes. So I'm at Tyler Perry Studios Thursday morning, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. And as I'm in my dressing room, all I hear mm -hmm. is, Kiki Hayes, <laughs> stock the place, stand up. And I'm like, I'm to boy? <laughs> but you don't understand. So even you, because mind you, I felt like, a good Tasmanian devil, but you know how they have like the tornado, it was happening so fast. Me being in my guest room, and I don't know if I ever shared this with you, my, 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 my uh, not guest room, what's it called? Dressing room, hearing a familiar voice. And that moment was like, 
okay, so I belong here. Because mm -hmm. if he's here, then I know I can be here too. Because for a moment, I just felt like somebody was going to be like, <laughs> got, you! got you! This is not real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no teleport. <laughs> Yeah, it just, it just, because it, it happened so fast. I wanted to just say, wait, and me hearing a familiar voice, you grounded me so much. Like, okay, this is real. Hey, I'm Kiki Hayes playing the role of Keisha. This is my first wardrobe fitting. I'm excited, so come on, come with me. Gonna be fly, so I'm gonna be super fly. Bam! You like it? Uh -oh. I don't even know why Marcus left me. Do you? I love your shoes. You like it? I feel like this was made for me. So much fun, y'all. Hi. Nice. Nice. Right. Y'all like this one? I think I like this one. Now I'm getting fire. Don't mess with me. Fire's like bam. Fire's like pow. Fire's like whoa. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. All right, y'all. I got to go back in here and get back to work. I wanted to say that it was so much fun hanging out with TPS Wardrobe. They are the bomb. I don't know what I'm going to be wearing on set, but y'all saw it's all cute. So check me out. See you soon. Peace. So we did our, our screen test and our chemistry test. That's how we were all chosen who was going to be whose husband or, you know, significant other. Later on that night, I did a wardrobe fitting, and that's when you did the video. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's what's up. So tell me uh, about For Better or Worse. Y'all shot about 400,000 episodes <laughs> know, in right? two weeks. That's what it feels like, <laughs> yes. About that, maybe maybe a week and a half. No, we shot, I want to say, don't quote me on this number, but I want to say after five years, six seasons, we shot 145 episodes. That's incredible. Incredible. And yeah. I, I heard y'all were doing, like, y'all got up to shooting more than one a day at a point. We got up to at one point, which people started getting sick after this. We were doing sometimes four episodes a day. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even sound, that, that sound crazy. We started out doing one episode a day, three days a week, which already was crazy according to the traditional industry standards. And it went from one a day and then we started getting good. And he's like, oh, y'all got this? And then started doing two a day. And, you know, then I think that especially once um, the merge with OWN happened and there were some new shows that were developed, I think just to show that we still got it. You know, we started to get better and better, and he started to challenge us more and more. And then finally, we had to be like, okay, we can't go no more. Because yeah. we weren't getting any sleep. He was like, oh, okay. It was kind of like, you know, you get that horse that's winning, and you just keep running them, running them. And then finally, it was like our exhaust hoses busted, and we needed a second. So prior to like 2000 and, um, 2008, uh, us doing House of Pain, uh, the standard to a multi camera show. Mm -hmm was three to four days. For one episode. For one episode. Yeah. yeah. So you come in, you do a rehearsal, you no, you come in, you do a table read, then you might they, you might have a rehearsal and then it's like two days of, of shooting and we kinda not we, Tyler and Roger, you know, formulated a system where we were getting through all of these different things yeah. within a day. But I think that comes with um, a lot of trust. Yeah. It comes with a lot of great professionals, you know, a lot of great actors, a lot of great people behind the scenes. And, you know, it really kind of gets to like a system where, you know, saying, you know what the other person is thinking, you know what the sound man is thinking. You know, you know, you know everybody's, everybody's capability. Yeah, at, yeah. At, at, at the same time. So that that's super dope. And I was really proud of just, you know, the success of the show and everything that came with it. But I want to talk about this party that I ain't get no <laughs> I want to get to the party. I ain't get an invitation to. Tell me about the party, Kate. Tell me about the party. The name of the celebration party was Imagine This. Okay. I did an interview um, at, at the studio with Jasmine, and the first thing I said was, I could not have imagined that. Mm -hmm. I could not have imagined being in the same room with Jay Z, Beyonce, uh, Bill, and Hillary Clinton. I saw a lot. Bill was taking a lot of pictures. I, I saw that. <laughs> I saw, and it's so interesting because I didn't get pictures with anybody. You know, sometimes it's not like with me, it's not about 
and especially in some of those situations, it's about being in the moment. I, I was getting ready to say that. Yeah, for me, I didn't pull out a camera or anything. No, I saw the I, most incredible I, stuff I've seen in my life up in that studio. I personally was taking it all in, mm -hmm. and something that Tyler had, Tyler said once he entered into the, the reception area when we first got there, that kind of confirmed what I felt, which is that everybody who was there was meant to be there. Right. Everybody who was in there was invited for a reason. He wanted us to dream big, and so I felt like, so if we're all on the same level, I don't have to run up to you as a fan and get a picture. You are just as excited to be here with me as I am to be here with you. I'm just excited to meet you and be amongst you and just take all of this in. And the other thing was, you know, Tyler did ask everybody not to take pictures, you know, just to, and it wasn't even about, you know, being private as it was, which I live like this in life, because I know people be like, Kiki, you gotta be more active on social media. Yeah. I believe in if you're too active on social media, that means you're taking so many pictures and you're posting. So, what are, are you, you doing? Are you really in the moment? But like, what are you doing if you, all you're doing is taking pictures of it? Well, yes, there's uh, that. But if you're at an amazing event with all of these iconic people, I mean, Cicely Tyson, uh, Spike Lee, Halle Berry, um, I mean, I, I, the, the list goes on and on. Maxwell, Anthony Hamilton, uh, my, Viola Davis. I mean, just. Then if I'm over here posting, I've just missed all those people that just walked by. So some, I'm not saying that social media is a bad thing, but you gotta know when to use it and when not to. When to take out your phone, just be in the moment because I promise you, as God is my witness, I didn't take a picture, but I made a lot of amazing impressions in a lot of those people in that room that That's night. Exactly. And That's so exactly. it doesn't matter that it wasn't captured there, it was captured here and it was captured here. Who was the person that had you the most starstruck? <laughs> Uh, wow, that's hard. Will and Jada were there, but I actually was lucky. I, I met Will years ago. Who was I the most starstruck by? Maxine Waters. Maxine was a, I, And I got a picture with Maxine. My, auntie, my sister asked, because I was like, ah! Auntie Maxine. Yes, Maxine Waters was there. Well, we know we love her right now. Yes, 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 <laughs> I, I, my sister loves her, as do I. And actually, no, I take that back. My sister's gonna be like, I didn't ask her. A uh, good friend of mine, Nika, asked her. Uh, Nika asked her, and we, we got a picture with her, but I was just like, wow, she's here. Anita Baker was there. Uh, I, I can't, I don't, I think I was just so, you ever have like um, that pins and needles feeling? So I, I had that. So on yeah. the first, the first um, opening, I was linked to Sidney Poitier all night. I was looking for him, and I'm not gonna say that he wasn't there because there were so many people there, Tavari, that there were times that I didn't know somebody was there until I looked at somebody else's story. Yeah. And I was like, that person was there? Or I've seen some of the red carpet photos. So that was like an amazing thing for me real quick. Um, so <clears throat> I was in charge of the, the tour team. So we weren't supposed to be giving any private tours. We just had like people on the edge of each hallway kind of leading you. And if you had any questions about whatever, you know, there was 50 of us around. And as soon as the night started, Angie Bones calls me and she was like, we need you to give like a personal tour all yeah. night. And um, I go and it's uh, Sydney Poitier and Bernie Casey. So I like hung out with Sydney Poitier. She said it just like that? Yeah, she was like, Yo, you, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I hung out with Sydney Poitier and, um, and Bernie Casey like all night. And it was, wow. it was the craziest because I realized at that time, like this is the star of the stars. Yes. Like everybody came up to him and gave him homage. And um, it was just a crazy, I'll tell you about that later. So, no, it, 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 honestly, I can't tell you any one person. I think that there were just so many. I mean, Beyonce and Jay Z, so at one point, you know, the, the, the doors opened uh, where the reception area was, and now we're looking at this long, just huge red carpet and all the sound stages, because now we're getting ready to begin the ceremony to start dedicating, you know and Jay-Z and Beyonce are right here, and the first thing that I could think to say was, because she had on heels, and one of the things that the studio did is they told the ladies during the tour, we're gonna do some walking so you can turn your shoes in at coat check, and they gave us these flat slippers. The first thing I say when I see Beyonce is, oh, you know, you don't have to wear heels. <laughs> you, <laughs> That's what you came up with. You don't have to wear heels. You know, you don't have to wear heels. I was like, you know, you can, um, they, have a, they have a heel coat check. See, I said I have flats on. She looked at me, she just smiled. She said, no, no, I, I'm okay. I'm Beyonce. I'm Beyonce, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wear heels when I wake up. I'm gonna sleep in my heels. <laughs> and Jay-Z just looked at me and he smiled, but you could tell it was coming from just, you know, sister to sister, y'all know. When we have our heels and the night was just starting, 
I was just like, you know, I was looking out for my girl's heels, but that's how like, you know, it, and that's what it felt like. As much as I could have been like, hey B, you know, I'm all about homecoming. And I, no, it was like, I'm looking out for your feet. Hey, you got nice heels, but listen, sister to sister, you know, you could check those in and, check get, them in. and get some flats. Get some flats. <laughs> so how incredible was the evening? Amazing. Watching all the people who were there, David uh, Oyelo, I mean, I just, everybody who was there, I'm already uh, in awe. Then I, uh, there's a, there was a gentleman, Kashif, shout out to Kashif, I didn't get your last name, but you know who I'm talking to. Um, he was assigned to me, mm -hmm. whether we want to call him a personal assistant or like they, they were called ushers of the evening. He kept saying, I, I need you to stay close to me because at one point I have to take you, we have a surprise for you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I just know you're number 42. And I'm like, I'll be. Don't be telling my, you better mind your business. <laughs> you said your age. Right, right, you better, boy, don't make me smack you. But um, no, he was like, you know, I, I want to take you some, you know, we have a surprise for you. So I'm just taking in everybody who is being, you know, um, honored there. And, and, and like I said, as each person is honored, they, they pull a rope and these fireworks go on, off. And at one point, he's like, I need you to come now. And they were still going on. He's like, no, I know that. I know you don't want to miss this, but your, your surprise is next. And I'm like, okay. So I go, and then I, as I'm walking back, I see some of my other cast members there, and there's cast members from House of Pain up there, and I see cast members like Lamont Rucker there from, you know, Meet the Browns. I'm like, what is going on? So I did know that in front of us is the last soundstage, which is the dedication to Oprah. So I'm saying, oh, okay, I get it. We're just all actors who have been on OWN, and we're just here to, to honor her. Really? So they have us lined up, and my number, where they wanted me to stand, was 42, and so we're kind of like all lined up in two lines. And the sound stage is here, and we're just, I'm just kind of watching, and you know, they're giving these wonderful, of course, words of praise to Oprah, and she pulls her rope, and the fireworks go off, and while we're doing this, we're here. They will be immortalized here forever. else's birthday party or somebody else's and then all of a sudden they're like nope surprise you're like what it became about me yeah that's super dope I, I i was i thought that was so crazy because i watched uh uh, I was watching social media and I saw Brad's and I saw China's and I saw Doc Shaw's and I was like, man. Did you see any video of them actually like No, I just saw like just still pictures. I think it was. happened so fast and I looked at my sister and I saw Kashif say to her like, you know, get this on video because you need to see how our faces, it took a, it took like a minute. It took a minute for us to probably be like, and all you hear is you hear the pop, and the pop is, I guess, the tape that was mm -hmm. holding it down. And you see us, and then you see somebody that's just like, oh my God. And we look down, and then you, you recognize that that says my, wait a minute, but Tyler just got a, yeah. Tyler just got a it star. All, it all kind of on Hollywood Boulevard. Out. Wait a minute. So in the midst of him getting his star, he thought enough of us to give each of us our star too. And How in that moment, that? how dope is that? How dope is that? I I swear, I, I he is, yeah, he's he he can he's amazing. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And uh, he he definitely. Uh, inspired so much of me in my career. You know, I know Tyler got Tyler haters and Medea haters, but I definitely am not one of them. I should have paid that man for much toolage that I got, you know, in the time that I was up at the studio. I mean, to be honest, to piggyback on that, that's a lot of, you know, what I was feeling coming off the show. It wasn't just that I played a character for six mm -hmm. seasons. It was also there's people like in school. Hollywood, yeah, who don't like either him personally or what he stands with, or they're jealous, whatever you want to call it. But the point is they used 
what was a gift to me. And they even actually had me confused at one time and I was angry and I had to catch myself like, Kiki, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. That was a blessing. Yeah. I get that they are now making you feel like it was bad, but look at all the wonderful things they did in your life. No, you don't let them change. Right how you feel, use this moment to, and that's when, like I said, I got to, you know what, well, if you guys won't let me do your projects, let me create my own. Yeah, that's what's It was, it was to, to strengthen me to go this way, but yeah, no, he, he's, he's, he's empowered so many people and given so many opportunities, and I do believe he does not get the proper credit that he deserves because, like, even, to be honest, I, I know that some of the powers that be, the good old, you know, White Boys Club in Hollywood, hearing that he got stars, and Atlanta, how dare he? Yeah, right. What? 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 They're pissed off. Like, how dare you <laughs> have the audacity to put, you know what I mean? He's showing them, I can do this too. I can do it all. I can do it. We can do it all. And and he's doing it, and that's making them throw the darts even. They're getting bigger and bigger darts, but it's not stopping him for what he's doing. Yeah, because I think, I think we get it. You know, we definitely need, at, at that point in my life, I needed inspiration. And, and one thing you can't, say about Mr. Perry is that he's a definitely an inspirational force. You know, the kind of... One thing I know, up, up at the studio, like, he'll make you believe that you can do things that you never, never could do. Never even imagined. Like, you know, in a small amount of time, yeah. and when you're looking back at it, you're like, wow, this was crazy, but you're on to three other things that yep. that are as, as enormous as that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of uh, uh, disappointed incredible. that I wasn't I'm there, but it's good. Lie. You was there, Key. You was representing. You was representing. Yeah, and, and and you know it's so interesting because everybody, because my sister was with me. We all had one guest, and everybody. And, like, <laughs> and you know they were like, Key, let me know if Lily's not coming. Everybody's like, Oh, let me know, I'll come, and I get it. I mean, there's so many people that I would have loved to have been there, but I, you know, having my sister there and having her oh, by that, my side, that's, and that, you definitely you you want your you want your day ones. You want to experience some stuff that somebody else can appreciate everything yeah. that you went through. Yeah. They know yeah, about yeah. those night you on your knees praying, the tears and the blood, sweat and tears. And it makes, you know, you're at the end of the road and you want people that were on the road with you to yes, be there. To be there. And you know? uh, yeah, no, there's nobody else I would have wanted to be there but her and and it's interesting because even though that particular moment was for me, her being in the room and she said this in the car while I was taking to her to the airport, Tyler said every person that is in this room you're here because you belong here. Right. And so she didn't receive that that was just for the people who were invited. Right. She wasn't just the plus one. She was there because she was supposed to be there she too. She was supposed to be there. That's what's up. So we could, I know we could talk about this party for like <laughs> two years or whatever. Forever, yeah. But um, what's next on the horizon for Kiki? So again, with my project, even though we just finished it, we are taking meetings right now, I'm going to call Spike and see what he's gonna, you know, be able to either do or refer. Spike. You need to do the right thing by Kiki. You know, oh, no, she he, was in bad boozle. He knows. You know what I'm no, I'm <laughs> One thing I can say about him is every single time I run into that man, it's nothing but love. It's Key, <laughs> you know. So I have no doubt that he will Brooklyn either. Brooklyn in the house. They will. He will either, you know, come on board himself or steer me in the right direction. But some golden nuggets are definitely coming. So doing that, I actually just auditioned for a show okay. uh, that Kim Coleman is casting that I, I believe that I did really, really amazing for us. A new Netflix show uh, that is being. So you're still auditioning. She's still auditioning. I am. I'm, I'm in the audition circuit. I've been, I'm pausing because I want to say I've been in the audition circuit. I was trying to get into the audition circuit at first and then I began auditioning. And now not only am I auditioning, but I'm auditioning for lead roles of new shows. Okay. And so. Because you are a leading lady. Thank you. I receive that. I am a leading lady. And I'm auditioning for leading lady roles. And people say, oh, you know, are you mad that you're auditioning? No. Auditioning means that I'm auditioning for the next opportunity. Right. And the opportunities are getting bigger and bigger. So I'm praying that when I get back, I have a call back for this show. Right. It's being produced by Wanda Sykes and Mike Epps. Mike excuse me, I won't say the name. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm auditioning and I'm, I'm going to uh, see what the next level is for what, you know, what I just shot. And I'm also actually um, on a panel uh, that Paul Hanna, who's a director, we're actually doing acting workshops. We kick off one on October 26th in LA to, you know, everything we're talking about, you know, because I'm not a teacher. All I can do is share my experience and what I've done and what's worked for me, what didn't work for me. But, you know, just trying to share because that's, I believe that as we grow in this business and as we get opportunities, it is our duty to share it to those that are coming up, to the next person, or even somebody who's even on the same quote-unquote level with you. Maybe there's an experience that you had that was different from theirs and vice versa. So I believe that we all have a duty to share our journeys and share our experiences with the next person because if it's something that can help them, why not? 
awesome. Kiki, I gotta take you to the airport, uh, but I wanted to thank you for coming out and um, you know being on our show, and I really appreciate you taking time out. I'm so happy service. that I'm here. Congratulations on the show. No, no, thank I'm you excited. very much. Thank you very much. But everybody, this was an awesome experience um, to have Kiki Haynes here, my good friend. Uh, thank you for turning in to Road to Hollywood. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow. Should I, should I give my social media? Yeah, definitely. Maybe that would help you, like and subscribe. <laughs> and So, of course, subscribe to... Tabari.tv. Yes, and I am on social media. I'm not as active as a lot of people, but I'm getting better. I'm on Instagram as uh, Kiki Haynes, just at Kiki Haynes. I am on Facebook, same thing. And then my Instagram is at I am, A-M, Kiki Haynes. That's what's up. So thank you, Kiki, and I'm going to get you to the airport, but thank everybody for watching this episode of Road to Hollywood. Peace. Peace. Dad, that was a dope interview with you and Kiki. Yeah, that was super dope. Kiki, thank you very much for squeezing us in. I know um, she was on her way back to Hollywood, and she stopped by the Road to Hollywood. So, Dawn, it was a great episode. It was. It was a dope episode. Before we close out, I have to give a major shout-out to my friends over at Manifesting Dream Apparel. Wow! Thank you so very much for keeping me fresh. But make sure you all like, share, comment. Subscribe, follow. Subscribe, follow all of the above to Road to Hollywood. Peace, guys. Bye-bye.